Hey guys, what's up? It's Eiflin here, and welcome to episode 13 of my Warframe Beginner's Guide for 2021. In today's video, we are going to be covering the Ground and Void, getting yourself a Strofa, and using that Strofa to kill Necromechs within the Isolation Vault so you can get your very own Necromech to prepare yourself for the new war quest, which is coming December 15th, 2021. So this video will hopefully be released by then, so yeah we are prepared but moving on there are a few things that you have to have completed before we move on with today's video remember that i asked you guys to go ahead and start the deadlock protocol quest to get the zorus very early on in this guide well if you were one of the players who backed out and never completed that quest you want to go back and complete the deadlock protocol quest now because we need to have that quest completed to spawn in an enemy called a treasurer and i'm just going to go ahead and show you guys what a treasurer looks like because chances are you might have seen him before so he looks a little bit like this. He's got a weird looking head. And upon death, he will usually drop what is called a Granum Crime. Now, there are three different types of Granum Crimes that we're going to be farming from this type of enemy. And of course, the type of Granum Crime that he drops depends on the level of mission that you're playing, right? So for example, the regular Granum Crime, which is the low level Granum Crime that we need, that is going to drop from low level missions such as Fusa on Venus, where you have to actually go to farm up the Strofa blueprint, right? So the boss called the Jackal, which you kill to farm Rhino, also drops the Strofa blueprint. So you want to go ahead and run that if you haven't got the Strofa blueprint already. After you've killed the Jackal boss, there is a chance that this treasure is going to spawn in. These guys can take up to five minutes to spawn in no matter what the mission. So just make sure to hang around a little bit. Once he spawns in, just do your best to kill him. I recommend bringing a weapon that has magnetic damage and toxin damage built onto it. Or you can just go ahead and spam your Zorus at them. They will disappear if you don't kill them in time. So make sure that you're able to kill them in a timely manner. You've got yourself a Cuban Yukor. I'm going to show you guys a build which you can potentially run to kill these guys super fast. So this guy is going to drop a Granum Crown upon death. In the low level missions, he drops the regular Granum Crown, which takes us into the regular version of the Granum Void, which is a place that you're going to be familiar with after you've completed the Deadlock Protocol quest, right? So the mid-level missions, you're talking like Neptune, for example, he's going to drop an exemplar Granum Crown, which is just basically another version of the Granum Void, but the enemies are going to be higher level and, um, you know, it's not two different we're basically doing the same thing in there which is killing 75 enemies and we have to kill 75 enemies in there at all times otherwise we're not going to have a chance to get the strofa parts that we're going to be farming last but not least he also drops a zenith granum crown and you get this from a planet uh like pluto for example right very high level the last corpus planet on the on the star chart and uh we can use like the hydra node which is the capture mission to spawn these guys in and of course jump into the granum void all of this stuff, spawning in your treasure, jumping in the Granum Void by using uh, a Granum Crown at a Golden Hand has to be done inside a Corpus Ship Tile set. So you can't just play any old Corpus mission. It has to be a Corpus Ship Tile set. And it'll make sense whenever I show you guys exactly what I mean in the gameplay, right? So what we got to keep in mind is that we get the Barrel and the bleed for the strofa from the regular granum crown so that's the low level missions we get the receiver from the exemplar granum crown so that's the mid-level mission like uh, neptune and then we get the stock for the strofa from the nightmare granum missions or the nightmare the zenith granum crown uh from the high level missions right it's very confusing it's a lot to take in i know but it'll make sense as we go along so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to cut i'm going to take us into a uh high level corpus tile set mission and we're going to get the treasure to spawn in and i'm going to show you guys the granum void and what you have to do in there all right so i am in a corpus ship tile set this is hydra on pluto and what's going to happen is after you've completed the deadlock protocol quest you're able to interact with these hands on any corpus uh ship tile set right so you can press offer granum crown and you can go ahead and spend any of the granum crowns that you've got so here is the low level here's the mid level and here's the high level so you have regular uh exemplar and zenith and you have to farm up you know the different types of granum crowns so the low level drops the regular granum then mid level exemplar and then high level zenith so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and spend the granum crown and this is going to teleport us in here and from this we have a chance to get the borrow and bleed from rotation c now this is a time trial and you need to use the zoros to do this 
So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be holding E and then we're going to be pressing middle mouse button to uh, just kill as many of these enemies as possible. These enemies are highlighted on the mini map for me. So it makes it very easy. And I achieved that by running the aura mod called enemy radar, which you can get from the night wave shop, you know, the credit offerings. So you go there and you pick up that aura mod, just slot that in on any Warframe that has a dash polarity in their aura, and then you should be good to go. And all we're doing is we're just doing this over and over and over again until we have 75 kills. And you must get 75 kills. If you don't get 75 kills, you're not going to have the chance to get the, the what's it called, the strofa part that you're after. So from this one, like I said, we have the chance to get the borrow and the bleed from rotation C, but we have to make sure that we get the 75 kills. What you can do is whenever you kill these enemies, they're going to drop these little triangles. You pick up these triangles and that is going to extend the amount of time that you have. So that is uh, a really decent tip. We're almost done. We just have to kill another 20 of them and uh, we should be good to go. So it is literally just as easy as hold E through the Zorus while it's in midair, press the middle mouse button and the enemies will uh, they'll die. You got to like throw it at the CM enemy twice. There we go. 77 out of 75 we spawn back in and we're not gonna be able to find out what we got until we complete the mission so what i'm gonna do now is i'm basically gonna be waiting in this mission for five minutes until the treasurer spawns in so we can get a granum crown off of him so that way next time we spawn into a corpus talship uh corpus talship mission we won't have to like stand around i just died i can't believe that <laughs> we won't have to stand around and wait for the treasure to spawn in before we can jump into the ground and void to uh, farm up our strofa part right it's more so like you're ready for the next run before the next run type of thing but like i said the treasure can take up to five minutes to spawn so i'm just gonna wait around here until he does spawn which he just did as soon as i want to cut so uh just gonna go ahead and use my cuban nucor and you can see that i deal like a lot of a lot of toxin procs there you just go ahead and cc him with my uh, what's it called you can go invisible and then you know he's less of a less of a nuisance i'm just gonna go like this we use this here so he is kind of a pain in the ass because he just keeps on running away from you the zorus will make quick work of him because it's the zorus and there is the crime that you want to go ahead and pick up he picks that up and then that is pretty much it so i'm just going to go ahead complete the mission and uh see what we get so from that mission i actually did end up getting the strofa barra which is pretty nice good demonstration um but yeah once you have all of the strofa parts just go ahead and craft it in your foundry you have to be match rank 10 to claim it so of course with all these episodes i've basically been expecting you guys to go up like a master rank per episode and you should be at the point where you're able to do the master rank tests all by yourself if you are struggling with them of course you can go check out videos on my channel or you can check out the wiki page and there's a lot of tutorials on either of those sources that you can use to you know easily breeze through the master rank tests if you're struggling of course but they should be uh pretty easy pretty intuitive now that you've you sort of got your bearings with the game right so like i said just to recap you have to be playing on those corpus uh ship tile sets right and you can basically just figure out which one is a ship because the node is literally a ship so here fusa that's where i would recommend farming the regular granum uh granum crown on top of you know the jackal uh to farm the strofa blueprint and if you don't want to do that you can do v prime or you can do ishter you know and then moving on for the exemplar so this is for the likes of the strofa receiver you can do uh triton which is a rescue uh mobile defense is kind of eh because you're stuck in there disruption is kind of eh defense is kind of eh so triton is probably your best bet for neptune and then moving on to pluto i'd recommend using hydra for the zenith granum crime which is for your stock so tldr venus is where you farm the granum crown to farm the barrel and the blade from the granum void then neptune is where you farm the granum crown on triton uh for the receiver from the granum void and then for the stock you play hydra on pluto and then you get everything for the strofa and the granum void in there and that is pretty much that so once you've got your strofa actually you know what i'm going to do before we talk about the strofa here's the build that is running on the zorus so that's pretty nice uh it's four forma it's got sacrificial steel sacrificial pressure maxed out of course i don't expect you guys to have those maxed out by now but just you know invest some forma on there and make a build that looks a little bit like this and if you're not maxed out don't worry you can still equip to, uh, equip the non-maxed out version and it'll still perform just as uh just as good uh my new core build or my cuban new core build this is what i was running so this is um 
pretty advanced one. Secondary Merciless is basically Hornet Strike. So I would go ahead and replace like your Prime to Expel Corpus for Hornet Strike because you're probably not going to have uh, the Prime to Expel mods as a newer player, of course. And then Prime Target Cracker, you can use regular Target Cracker. Um, and then just copy the rest of the build, right? It should be pretty easy peasy, but that is the Nucor and Zorus build. On the Strofa, you want to make a build that looks a little bit like this i just had to recolor it there so we're running prime fury you can use regular amalgam organ shatter you can use regular prime pressure point you can use regular sacrificial steel throw that there on you should have that after sacrifice quest corrupt charge go ahead throw that on shocking touch and molten impact for heat and then killing blue so this is another heavy attack build and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be jumping into an isolation vault with an invis frame such as uh, ivara right so ivara is just the one that you get from spy missions really easy to get doesn't have to be an invis frame but invis frames do just make it really easy whenever it comes to killing the necromex uh probably the best invis frame in the game to use for this is octavia because her abilities just allow you to stand still so if you want to make your way towards farming octavia prime for example that's a pretty easy farm uh, implying she's not vaulted then uh go ahead and do so right craft octavia prime if you've got her and then you know pretty easy but uh what we're gonna be doing is jumping into an isolation vault and um yeah just farming up some necromex all right so to start your first isolation vault you want to head over here to mother talk to her about bounties and just select the first tier of the isolation vault then you just want to head down to the gate we're going to be soloing this by the way you can definitely do this on co-op it's not going to make it like any uh more difficult if anything it's just going to make it a lot easier but uh we're just going to go ahead jump in here and we're going to do the bounty stages because this is basically just a bounty we're going to do all of the bounty stages until we get to the room where the necromex spawn and we have to kill them right so i'm just going to go ahead and skip to that part okay so we are in the ruins and my necromech just spawned in so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead go invisible i'm going to bring out my strofa and what we gotta do is we gotta shoot off his arms so you can't actually kill the guy until you shoot off his arms so he's a fast boy this one is yeah i don't know why this guy's so fast they're normally not as fast as this but i guess it's because he's in combat with uh with what's it called the infested right so He's sort of sitting at a weird angle right now, which is why it's kind of difficult for me to hit his, uh, his, weak, point, his weak points. And uh, yeah, we just kind of died. Yeah, uh, this, 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 this is the, the struggle of Necromech farming, right? So for me right now, he's kind of just bugged. <laughs> That's amazing. So yeah, you see how fast he died there? He was, he was sort of just bugged. And what we're looking to get from him is the Orican matrices or the matrix and stuff like that and we're going to trade that into a person called well not a person a robot boy called lloyd back in necrolis but before i do that i'm going to show you guys another cool thing about these uh these vaults here okay so you see how it says bonus activate the reactive crystal at the vault if we just go ahead and shoot this thing with our amp it's going to spawn in our boy lloyd and what we got to do is we got to follow him around and protect him while he activates more of those crystals around the vault then what's gonna happen is that big door that we were just at is gonna have like a little puzzle that we're gonna do okay so this is the vault right here and we need to enter in the code so it's risk cra voom and lock so that would be risk cra voom and lock so you just have to it's like a little memory game you just have to go ahead and shoot the crystals in the right order and then in the vault we have access to a lot of goodies and we get a necromech mod as well which is very nice so just down here uh this drops you a lot of like resources from the heart of Deimos, and that is just going to make your grind a heck of a lot easier right so just make sure to shoot these two pillars walk up them as well because you might get some extra stuff and another thing is uh i'm just going to overlay some footage while you're in these isolation vaults keep your eyes peeled for a resource called scintillant it kind of just floats around um so if you you know see any of that go ahead and pick it up because i'm pretty sure you need some of that to go ahead and craft your necromech the next thing i'm going to show you guys i'm actually just going to go ahead and do it in the one tech the next thing i'm going to show you guys is how you can like efficiently start your isolation vault runs right so we're just going to go ahead and use this little wiggly thing in the ground to uh get us back to the surface right 
And what you'll notice is I have a bunch of like lock pin stuff around here, right? So I've got two green ones on my mini map, right? So there is uh, isolation vault three and isolation vault two. So if we head over here to isolation vault two, you're just going to go ahead and fly on over. At least I think I, I've got these in the right order. We want to head down in here and we can talk to mother. So that's the person that gives the bounties. If I can wake mother like that and we can start the next isolation vault there you go so all you got to do is select that and then the next isolation vault bounty is going to start this is going to take you into a different isolation vault which is going to be slightly uh higher level right but two necromechs are going to spawn instead of one so you get more resources and of course after you complete that one you can head over to uh vault number three which is all the way over here so you might want to consider picking up uh some lock pins for yourself and then uh you know plopping them down so you can run isolation vaults super efficiently all right so if we want to trade in the stuff that we get from the necromech and buy the parts for our necromech that we need to craft we have to come up to this here funky looking door this is just to the left of mother you go ahead go into your operator and then we want to just start running on down doing your slides all that there cool stuff and then talk to your boy lloyd over here right so we trade in the orc and matrices for necroloid standing so i just middle mouse button and then press redeem and there we go i just trade in all my standing for the day or for the day i can't speak english and then i can go ahead and buy the parts right so i'd start with the void rig blueprint you need to get the void rig casing void rig engine void rig capsule and then void rig weapon pod and then as soon as possible i would pick up all of the necromech mods uh from here that you need right so i've got them all that's pretty awesome and uh yeah i could go ahead and pick that there up next time i can turn in my my what's it called my my standing but uh yeah you want to go for the void rig first i prefer the void rig a lot more over the boom widow the vo the the boom widow is a melee version where the void rig is just i make big boom boom and all bad guys die so go ahead pick up all the uh void rig casing engine capsule and uh weapon pod pick up your blueprint and then throw all together and you've got your first necromech while we're talking about the heart of demos you might as well go ahead and pick up the cedo blueprint borrow receiver and stock the Cedo is honestly one of the best weapons in the game right now. So if you're able to invest uh, a lot of time into running bounties to rank up with the Entrati family, you can go ahead, pick up the Cedo, and you've got another great weapon. One last tip for this episode. We've got these things here that are scattered around the heart of Deimos. Um, what do you want to do? Shoot it. Then what's going to happen is each of these tires are going to have like a different effect depending on the Parazon symbol that is above it, right? So essentially what happens is whenever the enemies around are affected by the effect of the tire, if you kill them with your operator's amp, uh, you can get some of those uh, rare resources from the enemies more or less for free, right? So like really bad mining resources, right? That we don't like farming for, we can go ahead and get here or maybe even like fishing resources, right? So if, if you're not a fan of either of those activities, this and also isolation vaults are definitely the best way to uh to farm up these resources right you can actually find some of these tires within the isolation vaults as well but uh, the effect of the the what's it called the tire is determined by the symbol that is above it so for fast it applies confusion effect making enemies attack each other uh expose every 12 seconds effects last six seconds confused until uh cannot be attacked until the effect ends bro i don't even know i'm just gonna put it up on screen so you guys can read all of them pause the video take a look wrists in my opinion is definitely the most consistent one which is why i wanted to show you guys you know footage of me running around the wrist ones so uh yeah i'm just gonna give up trying to read them all out put them up on screen for you guys to see and uh yeah all right guys so i'm gonna end this episode off here like share comment subscribe check out patreon check out twitch all that other good stuff Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode.